Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be talking about today is the mysterious disappearance of Cheyenne Clues. I'd just like to let you know I've gathered all the information off the internet. I mean no disrespect to anyone I speak about today and I've made this video for educational purposes. Cheyenne was a 22 year old stunning girl that lived in the Chicago area in Illinois in the US with her family before she disappeared in November of 2017. She was really upbeat and outgoing, like I said she was a really pretty girl. She pretty much turned heads wherever she went, that's how she was described as. And she was very well liked and she really did have a lot of friends. She was also the kind of person that was very very active on social media, she used to post on there all of the time. She was a very funny girl and really all she wanted in life was a meaningful relationship and to basically be loved by that someone. Cheyenne actually lost her mother the year prior to her actually going missing. She passed away after a long battle with liver failure on 13th of January in 2016. And this disease by all accounts is quite a painful disease and the person really does deteriorate so Cheyenne had to witness her mother deteriorate basically in front of her eyes and obviously after she passed away she was riddled with grief as anyone would be and it must have been so heartbreaking to lose her mother at such a young age really. I wouldn't really like to imagine that myself so it's just awful to even think about. So she, it's no wonder why she actually slipped into a depression. Diane by all accounts was really close to her mother and it absolutely devastated her when she lost her. Not long after this, she suffered another blow. She lost her Shih Tzu dog, which she absolutely adored. On the 4th of September 2016, she posted a post on Facebook paying tribute to this dog. And it said, Unfortunately, just lost another part of our family, my puppy Nika. I had the opportunity to have you as a best friend for 11 years of my life. Go get mum and keep her company up there. I love you, Nika. So not only had her mother recently passed away, which was her best friend, the person you pretty much go to for everything, and then to follow suit, her dog passed away. And like she said, your dog becomes a party family. Your dog becomes your best friend sometimes. And she probably even shared her grief over her mother with her dog. And it, Nika probably did console her. So it was just utterly devastating blow. To say the least, poor Cheyenne was having such a tough time in life. As a result of this grief, she kind of came away from social media a little bit. Like I said, she was a very active participant in it. Normally, socially, she kind of came away from it a little bit and she would tend to post things kind of tribute into her mother and things like that on it. But she basically wanted to be left alone, which I totally understand. And when she did become more social again, when she felt like she could get out there a bit more, she started getting onto kind of the party zone in a sense. She'd, she'd go out, she'd want to get drunk, she'd want to have a good time. And this was probably to take her mind off everything. To numb the pain and just kind of escape reality for a little bit if you like. She'd be able to get drunk, for, maybe forget her troubles for a little while and just feel a bit more normal in a sense. At least for a while. And like I said, she was a beautiful girl. She got a lot of attention from the opposite sex and she kind of reveled in it. She absolutely loved the fact that everyone, all the men would want to speak to her and always come over to her. And it really flattered her. One of her best friends was called Chad. One of her best friends was called Chad and he really, really did care for her a lot. And basically tried to keep her as safe as he could. Like I said, she received a lot of attention. Chad would notice this. He tried to keep her away from kind of any bad guys or anything like that just to try and keep her safe and he did find that quite difficult obviously she was grieving she was letting loose and she got a lot of male attention it must have been quite hard for him to try and look out for in a sense i did also find that she kind of got into a little bit of a bad crowd shortly after this and a couple of months before she went missing she was arrested with another man he was 31 year old Gabe set case. JM would actually be charged with obstructing identification and the illegal transport of alcohol. And he was charged with possession of a controlled substance. 
In the months that followed, there was quite a lot of men who tried to kind of cheer Cheryl up. But there was one particular man that kind of caught her attention, and this was 38-year-old Brian Biddle. There was nearly 20 years difference between the two, and Brian was very much into the party and drugs lifestyle. She began seeing Brian and kind of got involved in the same lifestyle as he was living. On the 27th of November 2017, Cheyenne left her home in Downers Grove, which she lived with her father. She got into an Uber. Brian had previously ordered this because Cheyenne didn't own a car. When the Uber arrived, Cheyenne entered it. She actually had her laptop with her and a few bits and pieces of clothes. She didn't really take very much and she was going to stay over at Brian's. She was going to stay a few days and this wasn't really unusual. Like I said, she was seeing him. She'd often go over there. She'd often stay over. It was a normal thing, so nobody really was worried about it or anything like that. And from what I could find, it seemed like they were going to party all day and all night and just, just the two of them and just have a really, really good fun time. While she was over there, she was texting her friends. She was on social media. She was texting Chad. At around 9.18am, Brian posted four pictures of Cheyenne on her Facebook page. He basically tagged them on her wall. Two of these pictures were of a cat and two of them were actually of Cheyenne. Everything seemed normal, nothing seemed to be amiss. Then Chad received a flurry of urgent text messages of Cheyenne, basically asking if he could pick her up. And this was in the early hours of 29th of November 2017. It's kind of around about sunrise, I believe. So Chad actually stated that when she sent these messages, he was asleep. He woke up 20 minutes after receiving the text and he obviously replied to them. He tried to ring her and text her, but she didn't answer and she never responded. After simply texting him a mere 20 minutes before he actually tried to contact her, why was she now not answering the phone? Now, at first I assume Chad probably wasn't very worried about this because it happens all the time, I've done it myself. Text somebody and then put your phone down, get distracted, move away and possibly don't even realise that they've texted you back. I've done it so many occasions. So it's not really out of the ordinary that much. But if a text were as urgent as people believe they were, then that could be out of the ordinary because if she was desperate to get out of there, why would she then put her phone down and not answer him? Cheyenne then went on to share a post on a Facebook page at around 9.30. She then tagged Brian in a YouTube video at around 9.35am. So why, after begging her friend to come and pick her up with an urgency, was she then on Facebook sharing things on social media and tagging Brian in posts? I just, I did find this a bit strange, to be honest. Now, after this, Cheyenne went completely silent. She never updated her social media. She didn't contact anyone at all. And of course, Chad began to worry. He was a best friend after all. No one had heard from her. And this was very out of character for her. She was, like I said, she was the sort of pe person that updated her social media all the time. She always spoke to her friends. She always let somebody know where she was. Sometimes she'd even go off with her friends for days or whatever, wanting to be alone or with a certain friend. But she would always contact someone to tell them where she was. She was never, ever out of touch with anyone. Completely. She always let them know that she was safe. So it was totally out of character for her to just go dark. Chad, of course, contacted Brian. After all, he was the last person that she was known to be with. So maybe he knew where she was. And Brian simply told him that he had no clue where she was. He'd been asleep for the last 18 hours. And basically, when he woke up, she was gone. He said that he had no idea where to or when it was she actually left. Now, from what I can find, both guys were supposed to be her really good friends. So what did Brian, the guy that she was supposedly seeing, do when he woke up to find her not there? Did he go out and look for her or even contact her to find out why she simply just left? It seems that from what I could find, he didn't really do much in the way of any of those. And why did she text Chad? Was she for some reason afraid of Brian? Unfortunately, we do not know the answer to these questions. And quite possibly, we might never know. And that's just really, really sad. If something really did frighten her that much that she needed a ride home urgently, and we never will know why, it's just not a nice thought. What happened next, I did find very strange. 
So, 12 days later, on the 11th of December in 2017, someone dialed 911 from Cheyenne's mobile phone. When this call was answered, nobody said anything on the other end, and then they simply put the phone down. And this was the last phone call that was ever, ever made on her mobile after she disappeared. Now, this call was made on the exact day that her father put her in as a missing person with the police. And this has made people wonder when this call was actually made. So was it done before she was reported as missing or after? Because lots of people do believe that this phone call was made to throw off investigators off the trail. If this is what actually happened, it would have to mean that the person that did make this call knew was close enough to the family or a friend of the family and actually knew that her father was putting in a missing persons report on that exact day and when they were actually doing it. This begs the question, if it is actually true, who was close enough to the family to know that kind of information? Chad would also go on to post the following post on Shane's Facebook wall the same day. Police began looking into the case and of course they conducted their interviews. They spoke to Brian, who told them the same story he told Chad, that he had been asleep for 18 hours, didn't know where she was, didn't see her leave, had no idea where she actually had gone. Her desperate family and friends turned to the media. They went on to try and beg for Cheyenne to contact them, or maybe if someone had possibly taken her to release her. And they did believe that if she could, she would actually contact them. She wouldn't let them worry about her. They do believe that she would have reached out to them. So when she didn't, I think that possibly they may have believed that the worst thing had happened to her. Police obviously began looking into the 911 call. They pinged the call and actually found that it was made from the Mallard Lake Forest Reserve. Since this was their only real lead, they obviously searched the area on the 22nd December in 2017. A second search was done on the 17th of March in 2018. And this was quite a huge one. It consisted of over 100 people and five dog units. And they would go on to search the 86 acres of land. They had a huge area to cover. But from what I could find, I did find it a bit weird that they didn't search the, lake, the bodies of water and the lakes around there. She was missing. Maybe somebody could have dumped her body in there. Maybe she could have fell in there. Maybe they actually missed some evidence by not actually scouring this. They did several searches, but only found a few pieces of evidence and weren't actually able to link it to anyone. According to De Detective Jeff Leonard, Brian Biddle isn't a suspect or even a person of interest. He went on to tell Crime Watch Daily that he's basically on the only witness and that he was cooperating in every way. He let them search his home, his phone, his computer, and all his other personal devices. I have seen that Shane's family do believe that Brian kind of knows more than what he's letting on and what he's telling people. And so do a lot of people that have actually looked into this case. When I looked into Brian, I did find that he actually was in trouble with the law after Shane's disappearance. And this was relating to drugs, I believe. This has made people believe that he possibly isn't the nice guy that he kind of portrays himself to be. Now there's quite a few different theories on to what happened to Shay and as with any missing case, people have their ideas and these are certainly not facts. I'm just giving you other people's ideas as to what may have happened to her. So some people do believe that Brian was involved, that maybe Shay came across something that Brian didn't want her to, that was... I don't know, criminal or something like that, that basically she stumbled upon information that she wasn't supposed to and that Brian killed her for it and that she was urgently texting Chad because she knew that he was trying to attack her or something like that and she needed to get out of there because she was scared of him. Another is that maybe she was taking the drugs along with possibly Brian. Maybe they were both experimenting, maybe they were she was using drugs with alcohol and it had a bad reaction, maybe she overdosed, something like that, and Brian panicked. Maybe she died from this, from a result of this, and he panicked and didn't know what to do and got rid of her body. Maybe she texted Chad because she knew that she was in trouble and there was something wrong and she needed him to come and help her straight away. There are also theories that she had committed suicide. Maybe the depression from losing a mother and a pet, all the drink that she was consuming and trying to be in a relationship, maybe it just all sent her over the edge. 
Maybe she thought that she would disappear for a while, kind of go on her own and think about everything. Maybe she went out to the preserve where she attempted to commit suicide. Maybe it failed. Maybe she was the one that rang 911 for help, but then hung up. After that, maybe she chose a different location to take her own life. Maybe this time actually succeeded. People also believe that it's possible that she actually ran away and left her entire life behind. Maybe things were just getting too much for her and she couldn't handle it anymore. Again, I don't really believe any of these theories, the first, the ones that I've just gone over. It's just my personal thoughts, but I just don't think that she would have committed suicide or ran away. Another theory is that Chad was fed up of being in the friend zone, as many people said that he was. That he was fed up of seeing all of these men all over her and he wasn't one of them. She only wanted to be best friends with him. Maybe he actually had feelings for her and maybe he killed her out of jealousy. Another theory is that Shane actually tried the hitchhike. After not being able to contact Chad and this possibly resulted in somebody else picking her up and maybe taking her against her will. This could have been an opportunist attack and possibly the police may have this information and are withholding it because it is an ongoing investigation. Maybe this person is a person of interest or a suspect in their investigation and they are just waiting for him to slip up. There is also a theory that she could have been taken into sex trafficking. Myself personally, I don't really know what to believe. There are so many things that could have actually happened. What do you guys think happened to her? Chad went on to post numerous things on Shane's wall over the years and he did actually post the following birthday message on a wall. I'd also like to bring to light these comments that I found on the True Crime Society. This case was very strange and we really just don't know what happened to her. Unfortunately, which is very, very sad, her case wasn't massively spread through the media and there doesn't really seem to be any new information coming in about Cheyenne. And I do think this is really sad myself. I really do think that we need to spread the word of all cases, no matter how large or how small they may be, and that they should be spread worldwide. So maybe somebody has some information out there, maybe somebody knows something, and they just weren't aware of this case and possibly new information could come to light from this. I really do hope that we do find out some more information on Cheyenne. And I've also found out that her aunt Sylvia Munguala actually promised her sister, which was Cheyenne's mother, that she would look after her after she was gone. And not long after that, she disappeared without a trace. She must have felt like she was letting her sister down and it just absolutely breaks my heart. It must have upset her so much. A niece, not only has a niece gone missing, but she made this promise to a mother who's no longer here. And in her eyes, she didn't keep it in a sense. It's awful to think that she mustn't blame herself. Obviously it wasn't her fault, but people being people, they do blame themselves more often than not. And we just really need to get some information on this case and bring to light what happened to her. If you'd like me to look into any more cases, please do let me know. And I will look into them for you. But anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Cheyenne Cruz. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.